Hey everybody, so for today's quick tip, we're gonna talk about chamfering. I have a couple of different topics that I wanted to cover with you. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Uh, to begin with, I'm just gonna delete all the, the chamfers that I have set up currently. So let's just go ahead and get rid of those. All right, now I'm not gonna go through the, the pocketing and the hole making here. Uh, I have the job already set up and I've selected the solid model uh, as my stock. So we can just focus on the chamfers, okay? Now, it's important to understand that you can have the chamfers modeled into your part uh, or uh, you cannot have them modeled and still add an edge break. So either method works. My recommendation is not to model the chamfers in. I find it's easier for selection if you don't have the chamfers modeled. So let's go ahead and suppress those and we'll come back into the cam tray. All right, so what we wanna focus on is these edges here you can see we have kind of like a counter bore here so we want to break that edge and then we also want to break this outside edge as well so let's let's go ahead and load our tool path so we'll right click on the machine setup we're going to come down to mill to axis we're going to choose select geometry in this example i'm just going to pick this face here uh, and that face will give me the inside and outside edges that i need I'll go to my profile chains. Again, my inside shapes, I wanna go counterclockwise and my outside shapes, I wanna go clockwise, all right? Uh, pick the top of job is gonna be right here. Uh, how deep we're gonna go, uh, this, this value here actually won't get picked up by the chamfer feature, uh, but you can type it in so that you can display it with the feature depth, okay? All right, so that's how deep we wanna go. From here, we're gonna to go to the machining strategy. And again, we're coming down to chamfer, okay? Now, we do also offer a corner rounder. Uh, it's just not displayed in the template here. You'll find a corner rounding in the available operation. So you can do uh, a chamfer or you can break an edge with a radius. Uh, we have machining features for both of those. Again, we're focusing on a chamfer. So we'll choose that and then click next. Now from here, we can jump into our tool size. Uh, you can go into your tool crib, uh, grab one of the standard chamfer tools that you have set up, uh, or uh, you can add one in from the library. Again, you have both flat and sharp bottom tools that you can use here. All right, so let's just go with the default. Uh, the next thing we're gonna look at is our parameters. Now there's a, a couple of things that we wanna pay attention to. Uh, the cutter position is a shift value. What this does is change where on the tool you're gonna uh, be cutting the chamfer, okay? So you can move it closer to the tip or, or closer to the center of the, the tool uh, by adjusting this cutter shift or this cutter position. It's a shift value, okay? Again, we can pick either a sharp or a flat bottom tool. In this case, I'm gonna switch this over to a sharp tool, okay? As far as our depth goes, there's three methods you can use to define your depth. Uh, it can either be the chamfer depth, the chamfer length or the chamfer width. So when you're reading your print, uh, if any of those values are inputted, uh, you can utilize them here. On our example, we're gonna just set this to 50 and then uh, that's about it. The only other thing I wanna add here is a lead. So I'll do a right angle lead uh, just so we can lead in and out and then we'll compute, all right? So this gives us our chamfer tool path. Uh, the chamfer uh, feature can be added two other features as well, uh, which is the reason why you'll see the depth value available. So this way, if your pocket depth was a half inch and you want your chamfer depth to be 15, you're able to input that here. Now, just in this example, we're just machining the chamfer. So we have, again, have to use our depth value within the parameters page to set that depth, okay? Uh, let's go ahead and compute again. We'll come over to the operation. We'll choose back plot and we can display the tool as it cuts around. Now, what I'm gonna do is I wanna help visualize the cutter shift position, okay? So we're gonna zoom in here a little bit. We're gonna back plot, and we'll click through this until we get the tool on this side. All right, you can see where on the tool the chamfer is being cut. Here's the tip of the tool. You can see it's just uh, right in this area. Now, what if we wanted to use more of the meat of the tool up in, up in this area here? Again, that's where we can use that uh, cutter shift position or the cutter position. So let's go back and adjust that. So we'll edit this feature. We're gonna go to parameters. We're gonna make this maybe 0.05. 
All right, so that is gonna get us our adjustment. We're gonna recompute. You'll see the toolpath drops down. When it drops down, it drops over as well. We'll just back plot our tool here and you can see how it's moved its position. Let, let's exaggerate that a little bit more so it's a little easier to see. We're gonna make this point one. We'll recompute. Again, you can see it drops down and moves over. Uh, we can back plot again and now you can see how we're using, we're continuing to move where along that cutter that chamfer will be made. Okay, so a very useful feature there. All right, let's go ahead and close this out. Now, the next thing that I wanna do is I wanna come in here and I wanna break this outside edge here, but you'll notice how it's coming up to the shoulder. Uh, this is a common scenario and I wanna show you some tools you can use to combat it. Now, I'm gonna take this feature here and copy and paste it. This way I can use some of the settings that I already have. I'm gonna say yes to my depth values, reselect my geometry, and I'm gonna pick the edges that I wanna cut with, okay? Uh, from here, I'm gonna pick where the top of job is, which is gonna be here. Again, we have our profile chain. We wanna be in a clockwise fashion. All of that looks good. We'll go ahead and choose okay. Now from here, I'm just gonna compute our settings and then I'm gonna backplot the operation. And one of the things that you'll notice right away is that the tool is running into our shoulder here. What we need to do is trim this profile so that we have room for this tool to come in. And because we picked that surface edge, uh, well, what are we gonna do in order to adjust it? Well, actually it's very easy to do. Let's just close our, our backplot. We'll come in and edit our feature. Okay, and on the feature page, we have parameter extensions. These can be positive or negative numbers. In this case, we're gonna say negative 70% of the cutter to give us the clearance for the tool to come into that wall and not run into it. From here, I'm gonna compute our tool path. We can come back over to the operation and back plot. Now we can see that the tool is able to approach here without running into the shoulder. Okay, so again, the big takeaways for you in today's quick tip, number one is when you're creating a chamfer feature, you'll use the parameters tab in order to define the depth. You can use a chamfer depth, a chamfer length, or a chamfer width in order to define the chamfer. Okay, that's number one. Number two, you can use the cutter position as a shift value in order to adjust where along the tool the chamfer will be made, okay? And the last takeaway here for today is when you're chamfering up against a shoulder or a wall, you can use extensions, both positive and negative numbers, in order to either extend your profile geometry or trim it back to give you clearance.